Hi everyone, Happy New Year. So I lost about seven or eight pounds this past year. It wasn't really my resolution to lose weight, but more importantly, I felt more control over my habits. Instead of eating, the, the, the concept of eating, eating drag, dragging me along for the ride, which is how it used to feel like. Now I actually dial the eating in my hands and I really like it. Back in April, when we first went into the lockdown, I went to walk on the Lake Sammamish Trail and I completed that whole trail. I had never seen the whole trail in one walk and um, I was astonished myself and I, I was thinking to myself, you know, I've been living here for six years. How come I've never walked the trail end to end? And then it dawned on me. The reason I couldn't was because in the past I would get dozens of food cravings before I could even finish one part of the trail. And um, it really awakened me to the fact that I wasn't even enjoying eating anymore. Eating was enjoying having my life. And that's when it dawned on me that uh, this is much better to... to uh, uh, to eat for your energy, right? Not not live thinking about what you want to eat next, right? Um, so back in June, when we first reopened into phase two and the bowling alleys opened, I went bowling because it was open and so uh, I wanted to try something new. And my first game, I think I scored a 70 or an 80, and not long after that, I was scoring 100. And I made it a goal that by the end of the year, I want to score 150, even just one game of 150. And I did it uh, with only a few days left to spare for the year. And then it dawned on me that two years ago, or even a year ago, there was no way I could stay in a bowling alley for three hours, four hours. I would get a food craving. And I would want to get out of there, even if I could sneak food into the bowling alley, which I always felt awkward about doing. I mean, I always got away with it, but I felt awkward. Um, sometimes you have teenagers working behind the counter. You can just tell them you have any sort of scary condition. Uh, most people won't argue with you, right? Especially in the COVID-19 era, nobody wants to hear a scary medical issue, right? Just get away from me, right? And so it's easy to sneak food into a bowling alley. The hard part is to be okay with your conscience about it, right? And um, the problem is that even if I snuck food in there, I could sneak a dozen foods in there, but I would always crave something else and want to leave the place to go get it, right? And um, it dawned on me I could never hang out in a bowling alley for three hours. We have a Thunder Extreme event every Wednesday night. And plus, last year, two years ago, I used to be, when I was eating a lot, noise used to bother me a lot. For some reason, when I'm fasting, Things like noise don't seem to bother me as much, and so that has helped too. What gets really tricky is that if I have to go into a noisy environment like that, and I'm coping with it by fasting, and then I see a friend who offers me food, that, that becomes a little bit of a tricky situation then. But even then, I can find ways around that. Okay. Um, also, I found it a lot easier to uh, be more malleable with things. Right When I'm traveling... Uh, for example, right now I'm staying in an Airbnb in Wallace because we're in phase three over here. You know, next month, maybe another city will be in phase three. I find it a lot easier to move around when I'm not being tied down by food cravings, right? It used to be that I would go to, on a vacation to Taiwan, to Poland. I would miss all the foods that I had back home. You know, back over there, it's harder to, in Taiwan... Red meat is pretty hard to come by, right? It's much more expensive. Uh, it's just not co a common part of their diet. Back home in the U.S., fish is harder to find. And I find I, I'm a lot more malleable to that now that I'm not constantly eating. Um, I find that activities flow a whole lot easier, right? If I have to drive five hours back home to Seattle because um, one of my students, I'm a professor at a university, I, one of the students has an emergency needs to uh, uh, miss a few classes and wonders if I can help with something, and I have to drive five hours. I, I don't have to add food into the consideration of how that trip, the logistics of that trip. It just flows a whole lot better is what I'm trying to say, right? 
Anyways, so I thought I would share all the different ways that addiction can hold you back. Even something as been, that seemingly benign as a food addiction. I don't think food addiction is benign, by the way. It's more socially acceptable for a bizarre reason, but I think it is every bit as bad as a cocaine or heroin addiction now that I've lived it. Thanks for watching.